Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Today we are going to talk about uh, basic electrophoretic techniques to separate proteins and study proteins. So, what is electrophoresis? It is one of the powerful technique for protein separation and the separated proteins can be visualized after subsequent staining steps. It is based on the principle of migration of the charged proteins in the electrical field. As we have studied in the uh, last two lectures some basics of amino acids and proteins and then we moved on to study the proteins and proteomics. Uh, you have seen that you know now there is an emphasis on looking at thousands of proteins simultaneously. That is very relevant especially if you are looking at the complex biological problems because the proteins work in the interaction, they work as a part of signaling pathways. So, studying proteins together in totality becomes very crucial. So, there are many techniques which are evolving which aims to study proteins in very high throughput manner and they try to utilize protein properties to separate them well. One of such technique is known as two dimensional gel electrophoresis or 2 DE. 2 DE is a powerful electrophoretic separation technique that separates proteins in two directions. The isoelectric focusing which carries out in the first dimension and separate proteins on the basis of their unique isoelectric points. And then the LDS page which separates protein on the basis of their molecular weight and that is known as the second dimension separation. So, because we are utilizing two different properties of proteins in the first dimension isoelectric point and in the second dimension the SDS page this technique is known as two dimensional electrophoresis. So, if you want to do uh, ex an experiment based on two dimensional electrophoresis this kind of workflow can be followed. You have extracted the protein, you have done all kind of quality control checks to ensure that proteins does not have any contamination like you do not have nucleic acid contamination, carbohydrate or lipids as a part of the protein and the protein does not have even salt which may even interfere in, in your assays. Then you have to quantify the protein and once you know that you know now you got a decent clean protein with, with good concentration that protein is now ready for the further complex analysis. And now your intention is to separate those thousands of proteins uh, present in that mixture using two dimensional electrophoresis. So, to do that the very first step you will do isoelectric focusing in the first dimension. Then you want to prepare the strips to separate them uh, in the SDS page and to do that you are doing an equilibration of IPG strips. Then the uh, next step comes for the second dimension separation using SDS page. Then you want to visualize the gels using staining techniques and then you want to do the image analysis using various software and then those protein which looks interesting to you, you want to excise those and then identify them using mass spectrometry. So, this kind of a typical workflow. Uh, so, very first thing that you want to uh, look into which kind of immobilized pH gradient strips you can use for doing the protein separation. These are the uh, acrylamide based uh, you know, plastic strips on which the different pH buffers are coated and then they comes in different pH range. For example, it can be uh, pH 3 to 10, it can be uh, even 4 to 7 physiological range and they also come in different length. For example, you can uh, uh, always start with a smaller length of 7 centimeter, but for the actual experiment you can choose the large length of let us say 24 centimeter and then uh, you want your intention is to resolve the proteins on the large gels so that you have uh, good separation of various protein spots. So, these immobilized pH gradient strips they are very stable they are much more durable and because the gel is prepared with a plastic backbone that actually ensures that the pH gradient is fixed in the place. It provides high resolution and it has also improved lot of you know, reproducibility in different laboratory comparison which was one of the drawbacks in the earlier 2D technologies which were based on the tube gels. These IPG strips provide you you know good capacity for loading lot of proteins and therefore, now you are ready to separate proteins in the first dimension. But before you know you want to uh, when you are doing an experiment the very first step you want to do you want to take your protein 
in the solution form and you want to get it immobilized in the IPG strip or immobilized pH gradient strips. To do that your very first step is rehydration strip. So, you want to rehydrate the protein solution uh, onto IPG strip uh, in the overnight in a, a, a reswelling tray and that you can do either you know uh, using a passive rehydration method or you can do using an active rehydration method. So, in passive rehydration there is no voltage is applied whereas, in case of active rehydration uh, you can apply the low voltage. Then after you know you have uh, put your protein solution you have added now the IPG strip and then you have uh, covered it with some mineral oils. So, that you know the proteins are uh, not solidifying on the edges and it is not getting evaporated. So, then overnight you are leaving it so that proteins slowly get uh, you know absorbed uh, in the IPG strip and then uh, the next day when you uh, want to start your first dimension separation then you are ready to do the isoelectric focusing. Let us also see some of these uh, details of doing uh, rehydration and IF in the animation form. Prior to isoelectric focusing in 2DE, the commercially available IPG strips must be rehydrated. This can be done either by passive rehydration or active rehydration. In passive rehydration, the IPG strip is placed with its gel side downwards in a well containing the protein sample reconstituted with a suitable buffer solution. This is then covered with mineral oil to prevent the gel from drying up and left overnight for 10 to 20 hours depending on the length of the strip. In active rehydration, the protein sample is added to the strip via a sample cup followed by cover fluid to prevent the gel from drying up. This is then placed in the isoelectric focusing instrument and low voltage is applied which allows the strip to take up the protein sample. Active rehydration is also performed for 10 to 20 hours depending upon the length of IPG strip being used. These loaded strips are then focused on an isoelectric focusing unit by passing current. The various proteins of the sample mixture migrate in the electric field and comes to rest when the pH is equal to their pi, that is, they become neutral and are no longer affected by the electric field. Progress of electrophoresis is monitored by means of a tracking dye, like bromophenol blue, BPB which is a small molecule and therefore migrates ahead of all other proteins. So, uh, let us talk about isoelectric focusing. So, as we have studied in the in one of the earlier lectures that you know the, the amino acids have different side chains provides the positive and negative charge. So, proteins have overall net negative or positive charges and the pH determines the ionization states of these amino acids and therefore, the charge on the protein. So, isoelectric point is the pH at which the net charge on the protein is 0. So, when pH equals to pi there is no mobility of these uh, proteins and isoelectric focusing or the IEF uses this particular fundamental property to separate the proteins and depending on what kind of pH strip you are using you can separate either in the uh, pH range of 3 to 10 or 4 to 7. So, when you are running uh, proteins on SDS page gel when you want to separate only based on the molecular weight you want to you know boil the protein you want to denature the protein you want to separate the uh, denatured protein on SDS page gel. However, in case of uh, two dimensional electrophoresis uh, because you have started on the IPG strip. So, you cannot boil them. So, you have to prepare the IPG strip uh, before you load them onto the SDS page gel and that is done in a process known as equilibration. This is one of the conditioning step which you apply 
so that the proteins which are separated by the IEF they are now prepared to be separated in the second dimension based on the molecular weight. So, the objectives of equilibrating these uh, proteins onto the IPG strip uh, are to coat the proteins with SDS for the separation which you use for the molecular weight basis. Then you want to also cleave the disulfide bonds which is inter or intra chain disulfide bonds and you want to also alkylate the sulfhydryl groups of the cysteine residues. So, let us look at the some of the recipe which is used for doing the equilibration. The first equilibration step involves addition of uh, DTT and that DTT uh, along with you know you are adding the SDS, you are adding the tris SCL and glycerol and in the second dimension you are adding the iodoestamide. Uh, this iodoestamide is going to prevent the protein reoxidation. So, whatever you have uh, denatured and uh, it you know those bonds should not be reformed again and these alkylates the residual DTT to minimize the vertical streaking as well. So, you have to perform both first and the second equilibration steps uh, and ideally you can do it you know a repeat process of that to ensure that you know your reduction and alkylation has happened properly. So, once the IPG strip you have already focused the protein based on the first dimension property and now you have also prepared this strip to be separated further based on the molecular weight. So, now you can use the second dimension protein separation property and that itself is a very you know interesting technology which is known as SDSPH, SDS polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis. So, the proteins when they exhibit different molecular weights uh, depending on the amino acid composition, this property can be utilized to separate the proteins using SDSPH gel. And this electrophoretic method which is SDSPH is aiming to separate the proteins based on their molecular weight. So, now whatever we have a separate proteins based on the uh, PI values they are going to get further separated based on the molecular weight. So, this page is one of the widely used electrophoretic technique it separate proteins according to their size. Uh, the uh, detergent SDS sodium rhodocyl sulphate is negatively charged. Uh, so, uh, in case of if you are just directly separating proteins on the SDS page gel you can simply boil the protein in SDS and beta mercaptanol. In case of 2D electrophoresis you are going to prepare the IPG strip with the equilibration steps after uh, reduction and alkylation steps now those IPG strips are ready to be separated further on the second dimension SDS page. Just kind of you know brief about SDS page some of the chemicals which you use to make the gels uh, what is the role of each of these components for example, acrylamide it is uh, providing the matrix, bisacrylamide is a cross linking agent, uh, ammonium persulfate or APS it initiates the polymerization process, the SDS is a negatively charged detergent uh, which makes the protein rod shape and negatively charged and then beta mercaptanol it breaks the disulfide bonds. So, some of these chemicals are uh, used for the SDS pH process I think it is a good idea for you to know the role of them and how they work uh, in the uh, per while performing the SDS pH gel. So, you have started with your protein immobilized uh, using in the rehydration process onto IPG strip. You have done the first dimension separation using uh, isoelectric point, equilibrated the strips to prepare them and now you have separated proteins in the SDS page gel based on the their molecular weight properties. So, far everything whatever you are doing it is all on the transparent gel. You have literally no idea that what can be seen on those gels and what you have separated until unless you are adding some staining reagents which can visualize the gels. So, therefore, different type of staining uh, reagents becomes very important. Uh, the most commonly uh, used uh, uh, staining reagent is Comasi Brilliant Blue, but you can also use uh, you know, silver staining, you can use different sensitive dyes like Cypro rubies and uh, even if you are looking at some modification at the PTM level, you can use even Pro-Q diamond or you can uh, look at for very sensitive detection you can use even cyanine dyes. Let us watch the following animation to understand this concept better. The IPG strip is equilibrated in a reducing agent like DTT followed by an alkylating agent iodoacetamide which prevents reformation of the reduced bonds. This strip containing the separated proteins is then placed on the SDS polyacrylamide gel slab and subjected to SDS page by applying a direct current between 100 to 350 volts depending upon the size of the gel. 
any proteins that may have been present as a single band on the IPG strip due to similar isoelectric points can now be separated on the basis of their molecular weight, with smaller proteins migrating farthest. View of a sample 2DE gel which has been stained with Kumasi blue. Each spot provides information about the molecular weight and isoelectric point of the proteins. So broadly, you know, talking about two-dimensional electrophoresis, uh, the very first uh, part you did, the first dimension separation in the isoelectric focusing, when you are looking at, you know, there is uh, uh, pH equal to pi, there, there is no net charge and proteins are separated based on that depending on what IPG strip you have used. Then in the second dimension, uh, we separated protein further in the SDS page uh, based on their molecular weight property and proteins are migrating based on their size. So, this kind of you know technology of two dimensional electrophoresis could be used for uh, studying the differential protein analysis uh, and, and that is you know widely used for many applications. You know a lot of biological applications have used two dimensional electrophoresis to separate thousands of proteins on the gel and then they have compared a condition A with condition B. For example, you know healthy individuals with a diseased individual. So, you first want to separate the proteins uh, from these you know two populations, you want to solubilize the proteins, you want to separate them on the uh, you know IPG strips, then after doing the equilibration step you want to separate them on the second dimension as shown on the schematic on the screen. Then you are staining them with one of the staining reagents and after staining then you can start visualizing you know thousands of spots on the gel and then the analysis becomes very crucial the automation in the software and the you know our capability for data analysis becomes very you know critical here because you want to now pick up the differential protein responses or a few very unique proteins which might have emerged in a disease condition so you want to pick up those interesting proteins and now from the gel you can simply excise those protein spots which are based on the 2d uh, separation so once you have excised the uh, proteins of interest which is the spot you are seeing on the gel and then we can further process that you know with some enzymes like trypsin uh, which convert the protein to the peptide forms and then we can further analyze them using mass spectrometry to identify the proteins. So, today we have tried to learn about some of the basic electrophoretic techniques uh, for the protein separation and we have mainly studied the workflow of two dimensional electrophoresis which is one of the interesting simple but very elegant technology which can separate thousands of protein. Of course, it becomes you know little uh, challenging when you we talk about clinical samples because you have you know large number of samples to be analyzed from the control versus test conditions, and that's where you know it, it be, you know some there are some limitation which people start encountering. So then, as a part of 2D electrophoresis, I also try to you know uh, brief you about the SDS page. Uh, gels which is separating proteins on the molecular weight basis. So, by now you have uh, got good concept of uh, how two dimensional electrophoresis can be performed. Let us start a laboratory demonstration session where my TS will show you the various steps involved in performing 2D electrophoresis is starting from uh, rehydration then doing isoelectric focusing, equilibration steps and performing the second dimension separation. So, let us start the SDS page lab demonstration session now. Hello, I am Shalini, I am a TA of this course. So, today we are going to learn how to make
obtain our gel the way we do for normal STS page gels. We will then de-stain and then this image is one of the representative images which uh, you will see after you have de-stained your gel. You can see there are multiple spots on this image and then later you have to annotate these spots using various softwares and identify your protein of interest. So I hope you had a good a view of uh, processes involved in performing 2D electrophoresis. You have seen there are multiple steps involved and which makes you know the process a little tedious. But if you have done everything meticulously then probably you can see some beautiful spots which are separated on the gel and those gel images reflects your hard work, your efforts which have been putting to know the protocol, the science, the all the steps involved in doing good experiment. And each spot actually reflects what is the isoelectric point, what is the molecular weight of a given protein. So, I hope now you have a much confident understanding of performing 2D gel based gel based proteomics experiment. In the continuing lecture we are going to discuss about some of the, the pros and cons of using 2D electrophoresis and how it can be made more robust and more quantitative for various other applications. So, let us continue the discussion on technologies in the next lecture.